Grace! I have waited so long for this. You're okay. No. We are talking fresh hell. Now this one is directed by Ryan Imhoff and Matt Neal, both of whom have roles within the movie. And this is a pandemic era, kind of Zoom call style horror movie. We've seen a few of these come out of the uh, kind of the lockdown pandemic era movies, <clears throat> such as Host, I think is probably the most well known. Here we have another one. Although there are scenes that take place kind of out of Zoom, particularly in the kind of the, uh, uh, the last act of the movie. So what, what is the story? And then we'll discuss what we think. So it focuses on this group of um, ex-students, all of whom studied at some type of drama school. And they're kind of getting together for a reunion over Zoom. And there is meant to be eight of them, and they're all from kind of different kind of walks of life. So they start this Zoom call, but there's only seven that kind of dial in. And then we get a, a latecomer with this kind of eighth person, but it's not who they're expecting. It's this kind of like bizarre guy who seems quite crazy. And things take a little bit of a turn for the worst when he does some pretty extreme stuff on camera. And it seems to be that now that all the people that are on this call are in danger of their lives. Now, what is going on? You'll have to watch the movie to find out. So let us discuss what I think works in this movie. So... This, obviously, is a certain movie that is kind of uh, of its time. And I do think these kind of Zoom call movies, of which there have been a few, have kind of dated quite quickly. Um, because, you know, it was almost like a bit of a flash in the pan uh, of, of style of movie. We had a reasonable amount of them kind of coming out. As I've mentioned, the host is probably the most well-known. But there have been a few kind of lower-budget movies as well that have, have come out. Uh, so it, I've got to be honest with you, it feels like it's kind of past its kind of moment to a certain degree. It's not necessarily the film's fault, but um, just bear that in mind. But what, what can I say that I think works in this movie? So this movie genuinely has some pretty disturbing uh, sequences in it. I was actually quite surprised because it starts quite innocuously. So I'll touch upon it again in a minute. But it takes about... I would say just under 25 minutes for this movie to take a, a turn for the kind of the dark side. And boy, does it. Um, there are some very, very disturbing imagery uh, that we see on the screen here. Uh, I'll give you two examples of where I think the, the movie really does go um, somewhat, somewhat kind of to the dark side, shall we say. One very overtly, and the, and the other one is, is kind of more of a... Um, a twist on the kind of a, a, of, a, of society. So the, the first one is we basically see a guy cut off his penis on the screen. And, um, you know, because it's kind of a grainy kind of uh, um, video call and things like that, it kind of looks quite effective, I have to say. It's like, bloody hell, this is pretty dark. Uh, not only that, he cuts off his penis and then feeds it to someone who's kind of chained up in a dungeon. Yeah, it's... It's pretty dark. And there's another sequence, for example, just to name a, a couple of but there are uh, there are a few more, uh, where a guy is getting murdered and he's kind of getting stabbed, but they've got these kind of filters on. Uh, so while he's kind of getting killed and obviously blood is coming out of his mouth, they, the kind of camera putting all of these kind of like bunny ear filters on and, and anim you know, kind of like anime filters. So we're having all these kind of... Uh, what are meant to be quite delightful and fun little kind of character filters on this guy who's kind of splaying blood out of his mouth and one's, you know, setting into a broccoli and all these sort of things. So again, it's kind of a perverse kind of dark side of this uh, um, kind of internet Zoom kind of culture. So uh, there are some definitely some um, uh, extreme sequences here and quite quite genuinely disturbing. And there's a, there's a few of them. So that was very good. And I would say that the second act of this movie is by far and away the kind of the um, uh, the, the best uh, the best thing in it. It's, this is kind of where the bulk of the 
the darker kind of stuff happens, I would say, and is very, very affecting. Another thing I quite liked was we have a real uh, swathe of different characters. Our kind of, um, our group of protagonists, for example, uh, are very different in regards to personality. And we have, for example, very, very much in, in political divides. We have a someone who is very, very kind of like super kind of woke on the kind of left. Then we've got someone who's very kind of on the right with conspiracy theories and things like that. And then we have all these kind of uh, people in between, all of whom have kind of different kind of like kind of personality quirks. So it gives you a kind of a real um, you know, depth and breadth of, of kind of people across this kind of... Uh, uh, sort of this small group and you know I thought that was quite interesting it makes the characters kind of somewhat unique and it makes for some because these were people who are in a class it's not necessarily the people that you choose to be with it's people that you just happen to be with which gives them a genuine reason why you would have people with such differences kind of hanging out and in actual fact they at the beginning of the movie where they're all kind of joining is like well one's like well do we have to have him he's like, well he was part of the class so we kind of have to, you know, that sort of thing. So it's not as if they're, um, you know, a bunch of kind of, uh, you know, natural kind of friends all who, have, who are very different. It's kind of like they're, they're, they're all going because they're all part of the same class. Which I thought was a neat idea to have a realistic um, spread of kind of different sort of personalities and why they're all having to come to this kind of this one uh, meet and why they're all so different. To, otherwise they would normally not hang out. So I thought that was kind of quite good. The acting is uh, is fairly good, I would say, as well, uh, for our cast here. You know, obviously, it takes a kind of a different kind of uh, style of acting to ultimately to the, do this kind of Zoom sort of style uh, video calls. And I'm not an actor. Whether it's easier or more difficult, it's difficult for me to say because I'm not an actor. But, you know, it, I think they do a good job here of making these characters seem somewhat believable in their kind of roles. I do have a little bit of an issue, which we'll come on to uh, in just a bit. And um, the movie, I think, is also trying to be a little better. It's trying to have a little bit of kind of commentary uh, on certain things, certain kind of political uh, things that have happened within the, certainly in, in America uh, over the kind of the course of the, kind of the pandemic, but it's also making commentary on Things like kind of social media uh, and some of the kind of the, all these internet kind of like trends that you might see sort of, that sort of spring up. Again, it's, it never dwells on it too much, but it, it, it kind of tries to kind of hit a, a, uh, a lot of them through the course of the movie. Even down to kind of like um, the way movies are constructed and kind of Hollywood and things like that. It tries to have a little bit of somewhat uh, somewhat you might call swipes at these kind of things so it, is, it ends up being somewhat kind of self-referential and um you know meta to a certain degree so it kind of plays it you know obviously this broadly would come under a found footage style kind of movie like these video uh, kind of calls style movies are genuinely are but they're the third act is kind of different it's more of a traditional style uh, of of film which I don't know why that was. Um, which now leads me to what maybe what doesn't work. Because obviously if you're watching this, this movie via uh, the Zoom calls in the first two acts, it doesn't really have any real reason why it changes to a more traditional sort of style of filming in the third act. Because it's kind of like, well is this a kind of a sort of quote unquote found footage movie or isn't it? Um, because if if we're you know if, if there's you know cameras that are filming in a traditional style in the third act, why weren't we seeing that in the first two acts? It, it kind of so these two styles I, I think when you kind of mix these genres, it's not the first film to do that. There are kind of other hybrid sort of fan footage movies, but I don't know if it really works. If I'm honest, a minor point that one I will say. Um, what else can I say that maybe? Uh, doesn't work quite as well. I think there's some misplaced humour in this film. Um, it's it's kind of having little jabs all over the place. And, and as I've said, there are characters here whom are very different from one another. And it's kind of making fun at woke culture. It's kind of making fun at, you know, alt-right culture. It's making fun of uh, all sorts of different kind of uh, personality types and things like this and how people are you know, uh, self-loathing, and so some of the humour, I, I don't know, it seemed a little bit um, counterproductive, and I think undercut some of the drama in certain places, because they, you, you, there are sequences here where I feel like 
it didn't really work and it, it kind of it seemed a little bit unnatural at times in regards to these little humorous kind of takes when we're seeing something uh, which ultimately is quite dark on screen some of the humor to me just didn't work some of it was reasonably amusing some of it as i say didn't didn't kind of work and that's kind of why i say some of the kind of the acting um was a little bit on the weaker side because there are things here that i think are applied for laughs particularly with our super woke character uh, and, and again it's kind of like really it just seems a little bit over the top a little bit kind of like too exaggerated at times and I, I, I suppose there are people like that but at times again it maybe was a little bit over exaggerated that's the only thing i think I, I, I kind of would say uh with the acting there sometimes it's a little bit over the top and our kind of antagonist as well um maybe arguably is a little bit over the top in uh, in certain sequences as well um the pacing of the movie, I think, is the big issue with this one. Uh, now, the it takes a little while to get going. It takes about 20 or so minutes. It might not seem a huge amount of time, but the beginning of the movie, the first 20 minutes, ultimately is very interesting. You, you are watching people on a, on a, on a, uh, a video chat. Now, I, I kind of liken it to like this. If you've ever had to watch someone's like holiday video, whom you don't know, Imagine how boring that is. And it's kind of like watching someone's video call whom you don't know. Imagine how boring that is. Because ultimately there's not, there's not really much that happens in the first 20 minutes of, the, of, the, of this movie. And you are literally for like you're just watching some kind of like theatre group's video call for 20 minutes. Now I understand, and I understand the reasons for it, because obviously you need to build the characters and it's doing this one by one. Um, and... Uh, you know, so I, I get what the reason for it was, but as a, it's like someone who is outside of that kind of, uh, you know, watching this as a, as a going in cold, it's not really particularly very interesting. You know, I understand that you want to have these little bit of an introduction to each character, but maybe they could have had a little bit more interspersed there to kind of make it a little bit interesting because you just feel like you're, you're, you're a kind of like you're watching a legitimate kind of, a video call with people who you don't know and it's as boring as that um it doesn't take too long thankfully you know we couldn't get to our, our our kind of our darker stuff just probably around the 23 minute kind of mark in the movie but it's a little bit of a rough 23 minutes to get there if we're being honest but the real issue with that for me is the, is the third act uh, the third act is significantly different because we come out of the kind of the um the video call structure and into a more of a traditional kind of style of, of camera work, which again, I have it's, I have problems with, although I'm not repeating, but to me, it kind of, again, the hybrid style is a little bit kind of like, seems out of place. But then we have this extended sequence with two characters and we get a lot of kind of uh, dialogue between the two of them. And there's a lot of kind of like, Somewhat kind of overly dramatic acting, uh, somewhat kind of a little bit of uh, taking jibes at certain cultural uh, phenomena, things like this. And it's just a long sequence where you feel it's too dragged out. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's very much, it's a lot of exposition kind of in with a lot of other kind of like filler, um, unfortunately. And although I think there, it, it could have been an interesting sequence had it been shorter, but it just goes on for too long. And you're thinking, this is the conclusion? This is the conclusion of the film? And it's like, ugh. It's just, it, it's an interesting film. It's an interesting sequence, excuse me, had it been a third of the length and then something else could have, could have happened, you know. But as it stands, it's just it, it really overstays its welcome, and I just think it goes off on all these kind of tangents, and it's, it's meant to be like this, like profound kind of conversation between these kind of two characters, which is touching on all these kind of like uh, cultural phenomena and how people are kind of feeling and things like this, and um, the motivations of our kind of antagonists and, and stuff. But my God, it just is. It, it's too self-indulgent. Uh, it's, you know, it's, it's not filmed badly, and I think the characters are interesting, but it's just, that they needed to be, it needed to be shorter, in my opinion, at least, and maybe have a little bit more going on. Because if we're filming in, if we're filming in kind of like, 
regular settings here, it, I think they could have had a little bit more visually uh, going on and a little bit more um, in kind of terms of um, different things happening on screen. I also am not particularly kind of satisfied with the explanation about what is kind of going on and, and why things have happened because to me, uh, you know, it, it, I'm still confused in a, in a, in a certain degree because there, there's some sequences that kind of seem supernatural. There's some sequences that kind of seem more terrestrial in kind of threats. And I never really kind of like was sure what the actual kind of end result was, what the kind of the, uh, what the actual cause was. Was it terrestrial? Was it supernatural? I don't really know. Um, so it, ultimately the, the end is a little bit kind of unsatisfying. Some people might like the ambiguous ending. To me, I did, didn't think it kind of, um, it spent too much time posturing and not enough time, I think, being definitive about what was going on. And maybe that's kind of a, a personal feeling on, on, on such, but you know, it, ultimately for me, it was a little unsatisfying. But there are elements of that, that third act that I did like. I do think it could it, it could have worked had it been a shorter scene. It was just practically a little little bit too self-indulgent. So what does that put the movie as a whole? You know, during kind of the pandemic era, obviously there's certain restrictions that filmmakers would have to abide by. So we understand that um, certainly things were not the easiest to kind of, kind of make a movie. I do think this movie succeeds in becoming quite... Uh, quite a disturbing film. If you like kind of horror, if you like disturbing imagery, it does succeed in doing that, and I think. And it does have, I, I kind of liked the group, and I kind of liked the intrigue. Um, so I actually do ultimately kind of enjoy this movie. Um, I just think there were some decisions made that really prevented it from uh, becoming as maybe well-loved as maybe a movie like The Hose, which I have actually seen, to be fair. But uh, I understand a lot of people really enjoyed this. This, to me, um, it meandered too much on kind of certain ideas and um, maybe didn't take advantage of some of the kind of the real kind of uh, the elements that worked for me. But overall, despite its restrictions, and I will take that into consideration, it's worth a watch if you don't mind this kind of like bizarre kind of like pandemic era kind of Zoom call style movie. So I'm going to give this one a 6 out of 10. It's, it's an enjoyable movie for what it is, but I don't think it's by any means a kind of like a classic that will be revisited. But the imagery, I've got to be honest with you, I'm, I'm, you know, it's been a few hours since I've watched it and it's stuck with me. And I, and I, and I thought that was kind of quite, quite affecting in certain ways. Uh, so it is a 6 out of 10, so slightly above average movie uh, in my opinion. Certainly for the kind of the uh, the style of movie that it's uh, it's trying to be. Would you watch it? Have you seen it? Leave me a comment, and I'll look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.